Um, I've kind of made this video before, but since I have more and more videos coming up and a lot more subscribers lately, I know a lot of my old videos are getting lost in the span of things. And so I've decided to remake this because this is something that's coming up in my life again, and I just kind of want to give a better explanation, I guess. The old video is titled, My Special Kind of Anxiety, and it is about... I always say it wrong. I say it agoraphobia because that's how it's spelled, but apparently the pronunciation is agoraphobia. Agoraphobia, which doesn't, I don't know, doesn't feel right when I say it. But anyway, the situation that's happened is we keep getting asked to go out to eat. And I lost my shit because it seems like people aren't understanding. The issue here is that before I had my surgery, I knew eating was going to be difficult post-op, and I told everybody we know, please don't invite us out to eat. I mean, it's hard enough being out in public anyway for me, but to add food to it when I can't eat just is added stress I don't need. I knew I wouldn't be able to eat, and sure enough, you know, like, honestly, okay, like I have this bag right here. This is a bag of Swiss cheese. Um, I could probably eat one piece of this before I feel full. And it's just a generic brand. Best one I've had yet. It's really good. But, uh, so this is how big the cheese is. And as you can see, it's really thin. There's nothing to it. So I eat this, and then my throat's going, and, you know, I have to wait for a while before I can eat again. And I can't drink what I'm eating. I can't really do anything. If I eat anything harder, like steak or meat... Um, I can't have ground beef. If I have steak or pork or anything like that, I could probably have one to two bites. Fork. Bite. That's it. So, as you can imagine, going out to eat is incredibly stressful because restaurants don't really have kids' menus here. And the kids' menus they might have will be stuff I can't eat, like burgers or fries, things like that. I don't eat potatoes. I don't eat fries, I don't eat breaded coated stuff, I, you know, pizzas, burgers, I can't eat any of that stuff. And so it's really hard. It's a really big pain in the ass. And I thought, respectively saying, if you want to hang out or catch up, that's fine, but please don't involve food. I thought that would be something that shouldn't be a big issue, but apparently it is because we keep getting asked to go out to eat. And it's like, oh my god, I'll have to go through this. If we say no, we look like dicks. Why do we even get put in this position in the first place? And then it starts all this panicky shit, and it just puts us on the spot and all this. And people are like, well, maybe you should just go, and then, you know, you can get out of the house, just sip on some water or something. Like, yeah, that's a lot of fun. Everybody else is sitting around eating, and I'm there with a little cup of water, twiddling my fingers. I mean, come the fuck on. You know, even if I could get small amounts of food... That's not the point. The point is, is that we've asked not to be included with food because food is stressful. And we've been ignored. And ignored and ignored. And yes, I've checked with Logan how he feels about it because he loves food, but he hates people in general. He hates crowds. He hates being out. He hates the cost of things. So he doesn't like going out to eat either. He can't stand it. And um, yeah, so we're both on the same page as far as that goes. And it's like, if I was, I mean, I, I can't hardly see to start with, but if I was completely blind, would you invite me to go watch a movie? If I, you know, if I didn't have legs or arms, would you invite me to go play fucking tennis or something? You don't invite someone who can't eat out to eat. There are other ways to hang out and catch up than to involve food, and it's just highly disrespectful to me. As far as going out and just getting out of the house and having a good time, uh, no, <laughs> that doesn't work either because I don't like being out of the house. I like just being here in my own home. And for those of you that can't understand why, this is the reason for this video. Now, as I said in my other video, I knew there was something wrong with me, but I didn't know what it was. I looked and looked and looked and looked for an explanation as to why I feel this way when I'm out in public. I always thought that it was just a normal panic attack or social anxiety, nothing big. I forgot how I stumbled across this and I was like, oh my God, this is exactly what I have. And I've had it for as long as I can remember. I can get away with pretending I don't have it 
because I have people around me that support me. But if you have known me, which I don't think there's a single person out there that's known me back into my teenage years, but if you did, you would have remembered that I have never been able to go anywhere by myself. I must be walked everywhere. I need somebody with me every step of the way. If you even knew me around the time when I had Dorian, when he was first born, I was like 19, same thing, uh, sitting in a in a bar or a restaurant or something with my friends, um, because in the States I did used to go out quite a bit. I was a lot more social, but... Um, I, you know, because I love the States, I love, there's lots to do there and stuff, and, uh, but I still always needed somebody with me. If I needed to go to the toilet, I would have to be walked and waited, or I'd sit there squirming, like, thinking, actually, is it worth it to sit here and just piss on myself? Is there a way I could get away with it rather than having to get up alone and go to a toilet and have to go to the toilet by myself? And to be put in the position where you're seriously considering pissing on yourself in public rather than have to get up and walk across a room alone that's pretty bad. So, um, as time has passed and since I've moved here to New Zealand and I hate it here and there's nothing to do and I've just spent the last 10 years alone, my social anxiety has gotten worse. It's not gotten better. It's gotten worse. And I don't like being around people. I, I've become very self-sufficient, um, just not self-sufficient. I've just become very, I just want to be by myself. I don't really care about having friends in person. I've learned that you can't trust anybody. And so this is my life and this is how it is. But this list here, I'm just going to read you. It's not very long. It's pretty short. It's just going to explain to you the signs, symptoms, and what it is I go through. I've had to actually put the pronunciation instead of the word so that I pronounce it right because I sound like a moron saying agoraphobia and that's not how you're supposed to say it. But let's see. Agoraphobia is a type of anxiety disorder in which you fear and often avoid places or situations that might cause you to panic and make you feel trapped, helpless, or embarrassed. With agoraphobia, you fear an actual or anticipated situation, such as using public transportation, being in open or enclosed spaces, standing in line, or being in a crowd. The anxiety is caused by fear that there's no easy way to escape or seek help if intense anxiety develops. Most people who have agoraphobia develop it after having one or more panic attacks, causing them to fear another attack and to avoid the place where it occurred. People with agoraphobia often have a hard time feeling safe in any public place, especially where crowds gather. You may feel that you need a companion, such as a relative or a friend, to go with you to public places. The fears can be so overwhelming that you may feel unable, unable to leave your home. Typical Agoraphobia symptoms include fear of being alone in any situation, fear of being in crowded places, fear of losing control in a public place, fear of being in places where it may be hard to leave, such as an elevator or a train, inability to leave your home, housebound, or only able to leave if someone else goes with you, sense of helplessness and over-dependence on others. In addition, you may have signs and symptoms of a panic attack, such as rapid heart rate, excessive sweating, trouble breathing, feeling shaky, numb, or tingling, chest pain or pressure, lightheadedness or dizziness, sudden flushing or chills, upset stomach or diarrhea, feeling a loss of control and fear of dying. This is me to a T. I can't even tell you how textbook that is for me. Now I can, I can be alone here in the house. Fine. I cannot be alone anywhere else. I can go outside my house. I can be in my yard because that's an extension of my home. I can be in the yard just fine. I can walk down the driveway to the mailbox if I know nobody else is around and then I feel real panicky as I do it. I cannot walk to the end of the street. I can't go past the end of the driveway by myself. If I'm in a store that I'm familiar with, I can walk a couple of steps away from the person I'm with and possibly onto the next aisle by myself. Probably no further than that. And, um, like if I'm in the movies or if I'm on the bus or if, God forbid a plane, I get real panicky and I, I feel like I'm going to pass out. My heart starts pounding. I start getting shaky. I'm like, oh, something's wrong, you know, and I'm just like, I need to get off. I need to get off. And the more I become aware of the fact that I'm trapped somewhere where I can't make an easy escape, I'm far away from home. I don't have a car. I can't do the stuff I need to do. I can't like, I I'm stuck out in public and if something were to happen to me, there's no quick way to get me to a hospital. There's no quick way that all that will set me off completely. And, um, 
Logan and I have actually had to get off the bus before because I'll be on the bus and I'll start feeling really dizzy and really sick and I'll start panicking and then my stomach will start hurting and I'm like, oh my God, I feel really sick. I feel really sick. I need to get off the bus right now. I need to lay down. I just need to get off. I need to get off. Maybe I need to call for a ride. I need to do something. I can't be here. We've stopped. We've gotten off and then it's like, okay, I feel better now and we just wasted money getting me off the bus. Now we have to pay again and so that kind of sucks and a couple of times on the way to tattoo appointment or something, I'll be on the bus and I'll sit there looking out the window and suddenly like I'll get real dizzy and I'm just like, I can feel the panic rising. You know, I could feel my heart speeding up. I could feel myself getting shakier and I, it's like, oh my God, oh my God, I know this is coming. Just calm down, calm down. And I'll just like have to take a breather and just be like, no, you're fine. You're fine. You're fine. You're fine. Nothing's happening. You're fine. We're almost there. Just we're on the bus. We're safe. Logan's here. Everything's fine, and I have to calm myself down, and it is so hard. It is getting harder and harder. If I have a ride, and I'm in a vehicle, I don't feel like that because I'm right next to the person driving, and if I need them to pull over, if I need them to take me to the hospital, if I need anything, they can do it. But on a bus, there's no way I could get help. Um, I just can't, and so I freak the fuck out with everything, and... Um, in theaters, I won't go to the movies unless we're in the very back row by the exit, so I know. And then if I like the walls shake, I'm all paranoid because of earthquakes now, and I'm like, "Oh, <laughs> where's the exit? Okay, getting ready to go. Get all my stuff." I in the movie theater, I have my purse on my lap, I have my jacket on my lap. Even if I take my coat off because it's it's hot or something, um, I cover myself up with it. But I have everything right there so that if I need to jump up and run, I'm always ready for flight, no matter where I am. And um, like, I'm, I'm just overly paranoid about a lot of stuff, but yeah, it just, it makes life quite hard, and it makes it even harder when people don't understand, and like, I know I keep bringing up these bullies, but the people from fucking LulCow, they always like to say, oh, I'm so sure that you have agoraphobia, because you have so many pictures where you're outside, sure, sure, you're outside, you really have it, and that just makes me laugh, because in the movies, they make it out to be where this condition is only about you being outside. It is not about you being outside. It is about you feeling safe where you are. It's very, very misleading. And because of that, people might look at me and say, well, you're out with your husband. You go out shopping. You you leave the house once a week. I've seen pictures of you outside. What the fuck is up with that? And that's not what it is. When I'm out shopping, I have somebody with me. When, I, when I'm doing anything, I have somebody with me, unless I'm inside this house. If I can't have Logan go with me, then it's my ex. If it's not my ex, it's Dorian. As long as I'm not alone, I can handle it. But by myself, I can't do it. I can't tell you how many jobs I've lost because I haven't been inside the building. If I go for an interview in one place, I get walked there. Once I'm at the interview, if I am directed to go somewhere else for the job and I've never been there before, I drive around and drive around and drive around. This was in El Paso, of course, not here because nobody here would give me a chance. In El Paso, I drive around and... I'm looking and I'm like, fuck, I don't know what the inside of the building looks like. I don't know what it's like in there. If I go in, what if I get lost? What if people just sit there and stare at me? What if I don't know what to do or who I'm talking to? And I can't bring myself to do it. I haven't brought myself to get out of the car and go inside. You don't know how debilitating it is to drive around and to know I have a job. I just need to go from point A, walk across the parking lot to point B and go inside and to not be able to do that. You know... I just can't. And the people can just flippantly say, well, if you need to go somewhere, just take the bus. No, I can't take the bus. I can't take the bus by myself. I can hardly take the bus with somebody else. You know, just walk, just go outside. It's not as easy as just doing anything. When you have something wrong with you, you can't just up and just do something. I'm sorry, but life doesn't work that way. If you have something like this, you need somebody. And all my life I've thought, maybe I'm just extremely codependent. I can't seem to do anything by myself. And I've been like blaming myself, blaming myself. And now I have a name to put on it. I've had a name to put on it for quite some time. But every time I bring it up, people are ignorant. They think about what they see on TV and they dog me and say that that's not what it is when I can fucking guarantee you that is what it is. So right now I am very angry and I'm very upset at people who keep ignoring our requests, stop inviting us out for food, hanging out in the house is fine, you guys, everybody knows what's wrong with me, and it's not, it's not friends, I'm just going to say this right now, it's just Logan's family, um, I doubt that they're going to watch this, which is why I'm going to say it here, almost 15 minutes in, uh, 
it's Logan's family that keeps inviting us out. We don't have friends. We don't have anybody we go out with. I've told them, because being family, you should be able to tell them stuff like that, that we cannot go out. That he doesn't want to go out, and I cannot go out. I cannot eat, so please stop asking us. I said, if you want to catch up, you can invite us over, or you can come over. I don't want to involve food, and they keep involving food. You want to go out for lunch? You want to go out for dinner? I'll pay. It's not just about the money. It's not just about the amount of food. It's about a combination of, I can't eat. It's not worth it. I stress the fuck out. Logan doesn't enjoy it. Why put us through that? It's just disrespectful. And it makes it worse because aside from his grandparents, I'm older than everybody else. I'm older than his mom. I'm older than his uncle. I'm older than his aunts. I'm older than his stepdad. I'm older than his stepdad's ex-girlfriend who tried to get involved. I'm older than everybody else. So where is the respect that I deserve for being everybody's elder? I have to respect them for being his family. Where is my respect? All we're asking is a simple thing. Stop trying to get us to go out to eat. I don't care if it's if this one happens to be his little brother's birthday and, you know, how about we meet up after the dinner or before the dinner, you know? Why do you have to keep involving dinner when you know this is something that we can't do, I can't do, and he doesn't want to do? And it's just, I just, oh, you know how big I am on respect. And I just think this is really fucked up. And it's been over a year now that this has been an issue and it's been brought up and it's been told each time no food food is hard stop with the food food is hard please don't invite us to food food is hard and they keep asking and it just makes me feel like a dick and it makes well he doesn't really care if he comes off like a dick or not but it makes me feel like a dick which I don't like feeling like a dick or a bitch I like being polite and respectful and I like people being polite and respectful to me and so the situation has just angered me. And so I posted about it without naming who it was about because they're all on my Facebook and I didn't want to cause like a family drama. I just wanted to kind of vent about it. And all I said was, you know, the one bad thing about having the surgery is that going out to eat is really hard and stressful. And when we're put on the spot, it just makes it really difficult. And everybody's coming down on me like, you should just go anyway. You should just go and have a drink and have fun. And you should just do this. And you should just do that. And it's like, it's not about that. It's not at all. And oh my God, I just, oh, I just really needed to vent. And I figured if I'm going to sit here for 20 fucking minutes again and vent, then I'm going to just update you guys for those that don't know. And maybe some of you might have this as well, might explain some things about me as well. And so there you go. That's what agoraphobia is. And that's what it actually is. Not the shit on TV. And I'm sorry again for blabbing and being angry. Not what I'm trying to do, but it's just really stressful. And now until we flat out say no and then probably get shit talked for saying no, unfortunately, but I'm going to stop blabbing now. I know I just totally gave you guys totally too much information. Scrap that. Don't listen. <sighs> really sorry. And I'll see you guys soon.